go on and talk about our first uh, equation in physical chemistry. Here it is. It's another statement of the first law of thermodynamics. All right, let's go up here first. Engineers back in the middle and late 1800s decided to divide energy into two different types. One was heat, and that's uh, defined as energy flow in response to a temperature gradient. And then work, that was all the other kinds of energy. Let's go back to our previous lecture. Uh, let's look at a temperature gradient. So here we have temperature, and here we have x. And remember, gradient is a derivative of something with respect to some spatial coordinate. Here we're just doing one dimension, x. And let's say at this particular point in x, we have this particular temperature. And at another position, we have that particular temperature. This means that there's a gradient in temperature. Now if we have heat here, or uh, actually what happens is that energy flows in the form of heat from a high temperature to a low temperature gradient. If we look at a more concrete example, suppose we have two metal blocks, and here this is at high temperature, and then right next to it we put a, the same kind of metal, but now here we have low temperature. Uh, metal block. So here we have a temperature gradient. At that particular point in space we have a high temperature. Here we have a low temperature. What will happen is heat will go from the high temperature to low temperature. And our everyday experience says that uh, the temperatures will eventually equalize. This is getting into the second law of thermodynamics. So heat can be thought of as a, a flow of energy in response to a temperature gradient. And as we'll learn when we talk about the second law of thermodynamics, we really shouldn't be talking about Q. The natural variable that goes with T is entropy S. Okay, so that's what heat is. And then the engineers said, well, everything else we'll call work. So the total energy can be divided into two parts, heat and work. Now the first law of thermodynamics says that du is dq plus dw, where u is the internal energy. That's the energy of a system internal energy, Q is heat, and W is work. All right, so DQ is D, uh, DU is DQ plus DW. Now let's take a digression and talk about this symbol D. What does D mean? Well, that's a differential. Let's go back, uh, review a little bit of calculus. Suppose you have a function of a single variable, so this is F of X. An example of this might be F of X is equal to M x plus b, that's an example. When you put in a certain value of x, you can calculate the function f of x. This is sometimes called y. y is equal to mx plus b. This is the linear function. Now let's take uh, two points here. Let's take this point. This will be x1 and this will be uh, f of x1. And let's take this point down here at x2, and this would be the value of that function at x2. If you're into uh, experimental stuff, this is the independent variable here, and this is the dependent variable here. And now let's look at the slope. The slope here is equal to delta f of x divided by delta x, sorry, <laughs> delta x, where delta here is always defined as the final minus initial. All right, so let's call this the final. We use the number two for final, and let's call this initial. So the slope will just be f of x2, the final value, f of x2, minus f of x1, divided by x2 minus x1. All right, now what we want to do, note that these are deltas. We want delta to approach zero. All right, so now what do we do? What we do is we move these points closer and closer together until they're as close as possible. The distance between these points, in fact, will be one over infinity. Well, you have to take limits and so on, but in calculus, what you do is that these points, when they approach one another, they get infinitesimally small. So now you have a point here and a point here. 
<clears throat> well, he, this was Isaac Newton's idea, by the way, in the 1700s. He invented calculus to uh, explain celestial motion. Now, delta has gone to the symbol D. So D means you have a difference, and the difference is infinitesimally small. All right, so infinitesimally means one over infinity, and that's essentially zero, but you have to take the limit. So there really is a space between them, but it's infinitesimally small between these two points. Now you write the slope is instead of delta fx over delta x, it's d fx over d x. So that's when this difference here is really, really small. That's what the slope is. All right, so d is an infinitesimal difference. It's a differential. So when you go back here, this says the differential change in u is equal to differential change in q plus a differential change in w. Let's apply that. Here is again is our universe. That universe is coming in handy. And within the universe is the system. And this is the system. So what you can do is have some incremental change in the two forms of energy, du and dw. And here is the system, du. Remember, u is a symbol for internal energy, energy of the system. So that the change in the internal energy is how much heat you put in or taken out of the system and how much work you've done on or the system did on the surroundings. Again, this is the surroundings. So another statement or the quantitative statement of the first law of thermodynamics is that the change in the internal energy of a system is equal to dq plus dw. So how much the energy is how much heat you put in or take out and how much that's w and how much work you do or how much a system uh, does work on the surroundings. And that sort of makes sense. That's how the energy is changing. You're putting energy from the surroundings or taking it from the uh, surroundings. You're putting energy from the surroundings. You're taking it from the surroundings. And we've artificially divided total energy into heat and work uh, since we're living probably in the uh, 1850s where the engineers decided to do that. Well, this is interesting. Suppose that you have an isolated system. What will du be for an isolated system? Well, remember for an isolated system, you can't have any energy transfer. So there'd be no heat transferred, no work transferred. So du would be equal to zero. And so any change in energy, uh, dw, this means that the change in heat will be equal to minus a change in w for an isolated system. All right, so du, that's just essentially a change in energy, but the change is infinitesimally small. That's what the D, infinitesimally small change in Q, infinitesimally small change in W. And let me rewrite that there. Eraser, yes, the eraser is kind of cool. Eraser function, a D, W. There we go. So I hope you have some understanding here of what this differential form of the first law of thermodynamics means. So it makes sense. The only way you can uh, increase the energy of a system is to first of all have a non-isolated system and then stick in some Q from the surroundings or W from the surroundings or vice versa. All right, first law of thermodynamics.